I had a bearing fail on my CNC mill. Not a spindle bearing, but a bearing in the axis. To describe exactly what's going on, here is the x-axis of the mill with the uh, chip cards taken off. So you've got the stepper motor, which connects through a shaft coupler to the lead screw, and then that has two different bearing blocks with bearings in them that are attached to the lead screw. The purpose of the bearing blocks and the bearings is to allow the lead screw to rotate, but to constrain any other movement uh, of the lead screw, any translation of the lead screw, and it also constrains it from moving axially. So what I noticed in my mill is that I started getting a rough sounding cut when I was cutting in the x-axis, uh, even with pretty uh, conservative feeds and speeds. And when I put the indicator on it, I noticed that I had about two thousandths of backlash on the x-axis, which is way more than I normally have. Normally it's less than a half a thou with the uh, anti-backlash uh, nuts that I, that I make. So I, I tore down everything looking for the problem and I was expecting it was a problem with the nut. Totally wasn't. The nut was absolutely fine. The problem uh, was these uh, bearing blocks and the bearings I have on there. So what I did for the x-axis is I actually had two of these flange-mounted 608 bearings uh, that are just screwed into a block that, that fixes it to a certain part on the table. And I, I thought that I was being really clever because the inner race of the bearing is actually elongated and it has set screws in it. So when you screw those in, it constrains the lead screw axially to the inner race of the bearing, which uh, is very convenient versus other ways of having to, to do that. The failure that I noticed is that uh, I could move the inner race of the bearing axially, and it happened to both bearings. I could just sit there and, and look at the, the bearing and see the inner race moving in and out without any of the rest of the bearing changing which seems like a really odd failure mode because thinking about how a deep groove ball bearing works, it doesn't seem like this should be possible. And I've never seen a failure like this with other ball bearings that I've used. I've even used, uh, or in the original Open Builds Mini Mill, they used even smaller deep groove ball bearings, and I never had a problem with those. So I kind of wonder if it's just these flange-mounted uh, cheap bearings that have this problem. The axial loads certainly aren't very high. So to fix this, what I decided to do was, so for the bearing, I'm using an angular contact double row bearing. This is something that I was also already using on the y-axis, and I just didn't do it for the x-axis because I thought I didn't need to, and I had found this more convenient way. But the way these work, um, they're very good at not having axial play and tolerating axial loads just due to the way that they're designed. Uh, the, bear the bearing block is a little more complicated than with those, those other flange mount bearings. Uh, and the way that I made it and still had it low profile enough to fit underneath the table when it uh, moves over to maximize my axis travel required boring this hole where the bearing is going to sit with a little lip on the inside where it steps down to a reduced diameter. And that constrains the bearing from coming out in one direction. And then after putting the bearing inside so that it's constrained from any translation in the radial directions, I then put a little plate on top that's screwed in that constrains it from moving axially the other way. The bearing sits a little proud outside of the bore and that ensures that um, there's no amount of backlash of the bearing. The bearing can't move at all. It's fully trapped where it's at. And then the additional part, which I don't show here, is once you put the lead screw through the bearing, I have two different collar nuts that I have to cinch up and I have to try to get them compressing inward as tightly as possible. It's kind of an awkward thing with a couple wrenches and then those have lock screws in them uh, and so I, I tighten the lock screws while I'm also trying to compress it uh, to preload it and then hopefully if everything works right I put the indicator on it and I check for backlash. So this, this is a little more finicky but it does work and I ended up with virtually zero backlash which is great, certainly less than I could measure with my thousandths indicator. And this fixed it, so I'm back to cutting normally again. And my finishes have gotten better again, so I'm back to really nice uh, shiny finishes, which is great. I just wanted to make this video to explain why 
you should not do one of the things that I showed in one of my other mill videos if you are trying to make a similar mill. And that's the end. <laughs>